Justin here today we are checking out We Fell in Love in October by Girl in Red mega song I heard this randomly at a friend's house thought the melody was pretty special and great production looked up a little bit more about it Uh, she wrote recorded produced and mixed the song herself stuck it up on YouTube over 40 million views on that so far and loads of other great songs Uh, yeah real it's relatively simple tune I just think it's a great kind of showcase for somebody just to be able to write a song if you've got the drive and you really want to make some music you know you can do it on your own if you put the effort into it and uh, really nice one to play if you're new to guitar there's only two chords all of the way through the whole song which kind of causes its own challenges because if you play it exactly the same all of the way through the song it's going to start to sound a little bit boring for the listener so you want to learn how to break it up a little bit let's get to a close-up check out the chords and then i'll go through a few ideas for uh changing up the dynamics a little bit to keep it interesting. There are only two chords in this song and they use the same shape. This is the first one. This is a C major 7 chord. Our first finger is going down in the 8th fret of the thicker string, third finger on the 10th fret of the 5th string, second finger goes down in the 9th fret of the 4th string, and the thinnest three strings are open. Really lovely chord. It's just kind of like a C power chord with this major seventh in there. And then the other chord that we've got is a G major seven, exactly the same shape, just slid down to the third fret there. Okay, root, fifth, major seventh, root, third, root. Very interesting chords, especially with nice, probably a slightly heavy dose of reverb, but lovely sounding chords they are. So let's talk about a couple of the different approaches to playing these chords and how you want to break it up a little bit. So the song kind of drives along quite nicely. It's got quite a heavy backbeat on the drums. That's uh, an accent on beats two and four. And a really nice, easy way of getting that effect on the guitar, if you just play that first chord there, is to play eighth notes. So all down strums, one and two and three and four and focus first of all just on the thicker string so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and okay just playing the thicker strings and then on beats two and four you push forward and play through all of the strings two three four one two three four one two three four two three four one two three four with all of these kind of things you want to try to make it feel good so the first part is getting the technique right then you want to try and relax into it so it just feels nice to it should feel just comfortable if you're rushing or panicking or you know trying to worry about the chord changes or whatever it's going to feel a little bit weird and tense so you want to just try and really practice the chord movement and that strumming pattern until it feels real super comfortable now the way it works on the original recording there's lots of gaps where it she just strums the one chord and lets it ring out for the two bars so at the beginning it starts with this eighth note thing where the drums kind of a lot of backwards guitar going on there a lot of heavy reverb and some cool effects which you may like to experiment with yourself if you've got a looper 
when the singing starts. Smoking cigarettes on the roof. Just going down to one strum every two bar. Three. Having all of that space there in that, if you just strum it once and let it ring out, really, really cool idea. I think it also works just as well to try and keep just the bass note going with the strum on one. So, just kind of, it kind of keeps it moving a little bit. Kind of accenting the two and four a little bit anyway, just feels right to do that. And then into the chorus. And then into the next verse, you definitely want to. You could try this. accenting a different note on the two and the four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, really important takeaway here is to try and do something different in each section. If you just keep it the same all the way through, we'll get a little bit monotonous for the listener. So explore a little bit. Maybe you're going to try and play it finger style. Or there's lots of different approaches that you could try. Get experimental, learn, make your own version of this song. I think it's a really cool idea. Um, if you're into it and you wanted to get into some looping, it's because it's just those two chords all of the way through, you should definitely have a go at having some fun with a looper pedal here. Just looping the, the first chord with the bass note and then trying out some different melodies or different layered parts. Very, very cool idea. Um, if you did do that, then there's the option as well of playing the little melody that you hear double up in the chorus. So she's playing this little... Uh Okay, it's just using the G major scale. It could be C major scale, really. We don't have an F sharp note in that melody yet. Uh, I would, it's kind of in, I guess, C Lydian, if you want to get all complicated and just go like, what on earth are you talking about now? Uh, because it's based around C major. C major feels like home, but the G major seventh chord and the C major seventh chord only appear together in the key of G. So that would kind of make it C Lydian for anyone who cares. But anyway, the, so the scale you would likely use over that if you wanted to improvise would be the G major scale, even though it's based in C. Something else I should mention here as well, if you're really new to guitar, you could definitely play this with just a like a two finger power chord. Just playing C to G. You could play the whole song like that if you wanted to. And literally just sliding that shape up and down. I think because it's so simple, it's a great one to get going with. Also a good thing if you want to get into production. You know, I just I'd really like to encourage you to use this as an inspirational song, to go and have a listen to it and go, wow, this person's done this all on their own. You don't need to have a big fancy studio and massive producers and all of that sort of stuff to make a great track. If you're dedicated and you're into it and you put a lot of effort in, you can get some really amazing stuff cooked up on your own. You just need to think about it, learn to you know, develop your skill sets. I'm not saying it's easy, right? It's far from easy, but it's definitely possible if you're determined to do it. So I didn't hope this lesson will not only inspire you to check out this great song, but maybe inspire you to get into making your own music as well. So look, I really hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You'll take care of yourselves out there. Bye-bye.